Waterton is a small hamlet in southern Alberta. Located close to the US border, this small town is home to a population of 105. During its busy summer season, the streets are heaving with tourists. Famous trails are well trodden and accommodation and eating options are abundant. However, during winter, it's a very different story. The town's population drops to around 30 and visitor numbers plummet. Play parks are buried in snow, trails are closed and cottages boarded up to keep them safe from the encroaching winter storms. Accommodation options are minimal and places to eat incredibly scarce. The waterfalls are frozen and wildlife does its best to take back the town. You'll still need to come prepared with enough fuel and supplies for the duration of your trip. But is it still worth a visit in the depths of winter? We set off on our 270 kilometre drive from Calgary, choosing to drive the Highway 22, the more scenic option. The fresh snow and blue sky made rural Alberta look like something out of a fairy tale. We passed farmland and the foothills, passed through quaint country towns, and even spotted a moose. All before a quick stop at Lundbrook Falls. And of course, no drive to Waterton would be complete without a quick detour to the Burmese tree. Considered the oldest tree in Alberta, this poor, battered old tree died in the 1970s and toppled over completely in 1998. However, the provincial government, federal government, locals and private investors fought to resurrect this infamous tree. All pitching in to run metal rods through its branches, steel straps to reattach limbs and bolts to secure its roots. They campaigned vigorously to divert the highway around the tree, and it still stands proud today to welcome people to Crow's Nest Pass. Yeah, let's not pretend this is essentially a dead log, just stapled to the side of a rock. As we approached Waterton, mountains began to rise out of the prairies. We have arrived in Waterton, and as expected, it is pretty much a ghost town. You've got lots of boarded up windows and a lot of the houses and most things are closed apart from a couple of hotels. But it is still really nice just to be away from the city and even away from the crowds you might find in Banff for Lake Louise kind of year round. But our main aim of today really is to go up to the Bear's Hump, which is on that mountain just behind me here. That gives you a viewpoint over the whole of Waterton. And that's somewhere that I've shot in summer but haven't shot in winter before. So we're going to go up there for sunset and then probably again at sunrise. Uh, but for now, we're just taking a walk around Waterton, taking a walk around the town and by the lake here and just seeing what we can find. So let's see if we can find some shots. The weather was fantastic, but the thick blanket of snow did make lakeside landscape photography a little more challenging. However, there were still shots to be had, often including a human element, like this gas station buried in snow. This image I almost didn't take, and it really felt like a passing throwaway snap. However, once edited, I kind of like it. The trees frame the hut and the footprints guide the eye. It just goes to show that sometimes it is worth trusting your gut and just taking that shot. 
Just about to head on up to the Bears Hump for sunset now. Uh, it's probably a couple hours beforehand, so we've given ourselves plenty of time to actually get up there. But you can see here, this is the fence from uh, summer. So there must be a couple of feet of snow under here, but it seems pretty uh, hard packed, so we should be good. We've only got spikes with us, so fingers crossed that'll be all right. So it's been a few years since I last did this little hike in, and that was in summer. And it was before all the kind of devastating wildfires that they had through Waterton. Uh, and they were really bad, you know, even a you know, little Parks Canada building down the bottom here got burnt down and the town itself was pretty close to being destroyed. But you can see here from this trail used to be in the shade, in the woods, but now it's just fields and fields of dead trees. Up on the top of Bears Hump now, just overlooking Waterton, you might be able to tell that it is super windy up here, so it's a bit bitter, but hopefully the, uh, the audio is okay. That hike up took about 40 minutes, and this is where we're going to shoot sunset from tonight. Like, there's a bit of cloud in the sky, so fingers crossed we get a little bit of colour. Um, but yeah, let's scope out some composition. even even windier up here um, I think the sun's actually coming from behind us let's uh, let's try that again I've just come down where it's a little bit less windy a little bit more sheltered but I think today it's sunset which is kind of setting behind us and then we'll be shooting into the sun tomorrow for sunrise the sun's gonna rise just kind of from the prairies almost so I think in this circumstance that might work better because the sun's gonna come up and actually illuminate the mountains and hopefully part of this valley below us so we're going to probably stick around for a little bit longer and see if the light does get any better here. But I'm not super hopeful, but fingers crossed uh, tomorrow morning works out. As the evening went on, we did get some light. A soft glow in the distant clouds. Maybe the light wasn't the best, but I like the balance of the foreground rocks in the bottom right, with the mountain towards the left. But would sunrise yield better results? We made it back up here for sunrise. Like the walk in this morning was a bit more of a slog than we expected. The, uh, the trail had completely blown over. So we were breaking trail again and it took us a bit longer than we would have hoped for to get back up here. And also we, we probably should have gotten up earlier to be honest. Like you might have seen from some of that footage, the clouds look pretty incredible on the way up. Loads of pinks, loads of oranges. And then as soon as we got to the top, it kind of faded away a bit. But I still think it's pretty, making a pretty good image. What I'm hoping for is I've shot a bunch of different brackets and a bunch of different like exposures. So as the sun came over the horizon here, I have shot it at a high f-stop, kind of 11 to 16 to get that sun star. And this lens is really good for that. And then I've also shot it with light hitting these rocks behind me. And then we might wait around a little bit longer and just see if the light comes through into the valley anymore. And I also got some pretty good light in the clouds. So what I'll do is I'll combine all those together and then hopefully we'll have a pretty winning shot and yeah, if it's good, I'll put it on the screen now for you. And what a difference some good light makes. The golden light grazing those foreground rocks and the vibrant sun star coming over the horizon really balance this image and make it pop. The light has completely gone now, so 
even though maybe we missed the best of it, we did get some pretty good sunrise to be honest with you. So super stoked we came back up. I think I'm going to end the video there. We had to battle the wind a bit up here today. Uh, so hopefully the audio is all right. And uh, hopefully that picture came together all right. The, the tripod kept getting blown around. But yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you on the next one.